We gotta learn how to breathe again. Breath. Breath is indeed pretty crazy. Yeah, bro. Yeah, my client just bought me this book, Breathe. Have you read that book? Bro, I told you. I, I bought it. So a guy told me about it on the line at BurgerFi. Yes, West Palm yes. And I bought it on the line. Good afternoon. Good evening or good morning, depending on where you're at or what time of day it is that you are listening. Thank you for joining us and coming back to the New Life podcast. Today, Kenny and I are going to talk about work-life balance and managing that with nutrition, which, you know, that basically means for uh, people that have a full-time job or have a small business, combining that with uh, working out, nutrition and all that, we're basically going to go over what we do, what we think works for us and could work for other people, and basically, you know, just go over those. Th- yeah, those I aspects. want to give some insight on to, you know, how to structure your eating throughout the day, depending on what type of job you have, whether it's a normal nine to five or, like you said, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial lifestyle. So, um, yeah, but the whole work-life balance is such a big topic, and that way of wording it really encapsulates everything, um, all aspects of like what we're trying to say. So how do we balance that? And I mean, and, and, and it's a big part of even the podcast, you know, the mission we have through this podcast is first, I think we're going to learn a lot from the podcast, you know, Mm -hmm. on what we do individually and what we could be doing better. And, you know, it's all about being grateful, nutrition, mental health. And I think, I mean, I dare to say work-life balance is probably one of the top three most influential aspects of your life when it comes to mental health and even physical health. Right. Work-life balance is really just balance in general of your entire lifestyle. Yeah. Because we all have to work, right? We're all put on the world to fulfill a purpose and exert energy towards something. So, you know, having a job is essential. I I, re- I saw the other day, it's a job is like a stepping stone, right? Yeah. A job is something where that you do to give you money to, you know, live in the world. But a career is something more of a passion, more something that you live with and something that you build into your life hopefully something that you enjoy, right? So that it's not a job, it's not work. Um, You're not working for a paycheck, you're working for fulfillment or to help others or to, to, you know, share something valuable. Um, Yeah, and I want to add something real quick before I forget. So, yeah, doing something you're passionate about does benefit you a lot more. It it makes you feel more fulfilled. And it kind of like removes that work aspect of it. But also, you have to enjoy, in my opinion, enjoy and do with passion and honor whatever it is that you're doing, you know? Because some people, for example, I kind of always knew what I wanted to do, but I did other things before being able to reach it, which is, you know, the culinary world. So I did other things before I worked in food businesses. And I still enjoyed what I did, you know? I always did the best work I can do. And... You know, I feel that like that, that speeds up the process because you're more focused, you're in a better mental state versus you being in a job and always saying, ah, you know, F this, you know, I'm only going to be here for a year or whatever it is. You know, you're just putting negativity into your life. Yeah. And it's, I mean, obviously the mindset, but having that momentum, that productive momentum of if you enjoy it, you're like actually working to be better at it. And you build up this momentum and that's what I sense with you is, you know, from everything you've told me is that, like you said, you've always been in a, a job where you enjoyed it, like the culinary lifestyle or numbers, you know, I know you're big on numbers and organization, things like that. So you've always had that momentum and it's always been around you and you've always been pursuing it and like actually working hard at it and actually seeing payoffs as well to keep you into it. And I feel like it's hard when you maybe don't know what you want or don't know what you enjoy necessarily or you you know were raised where it where you took a path that you weren't meant to take kind of thing like if you're in college 
but you have more of an entrepreneurial mind. Um, so you get that, you lose that momentum towards, you know, that, that drive that you naturally have. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. I know what you mean. Cause, because maybe if you thought it was going to last six months and you're two years into it, you know, you're going to lose motivation. But what, what I want to add to that is that I've learned something from every job that I've done. For sure. And even if it's not related at all to what you ultimately want to do, right. you're either going to learn about relationships with your coworkers, you're going to learn things from them that at the moment you might not understand, but maybe a few years down the road, I don't know, you're something, man. I don't know. You're changing the battery in your car, you know, and you learn that from one of your coworkers right. or something like that. Right. Jobs are essential to have. Like yes. I said, it, it is a stepping stone to find a career. But a job is essential and you should explore so many different kinds at a young age to really see and answer that question. What do you enjoy? What are you good at? What can you be fulfilled doing? What purpose can you be fulfilled providing? You know, so. And don't settle. Don't settle. I mean, always enjoy, be learning and adapting. Exactly. Enjoy wherever you are. And at the end of the, of the day, be grateful that we're able to have a job and have an income you know some people live in countries where they can have a phd and and they probably make what a person makes here at mcdonald's you know mm -hmm. so always acknowledge that but don't settle you know so if you're not doing what you want to do just you know draw draw out a plan have a vision and try to do it and if you fell Try to do it again, you know? And keep it broad. So I'll use myself, for example. I knew I was in a spot where I was on a road that I no longer wanted to go down. And it was it was a sitting in classroom in college and trying to get this specific nutritional degree that I was in there to get. And I, I knew, right, I already narrowed it down to that I was interested in health. I knew I was interested in the body and health, so I, I chose that major, right? It made sense. So I kept it broad, and I still haven't figured it out to this day, but I kept that broad topic of the body and health and wanting to help people, wellness in general. Physical, mental, doesn't matter. Just overall learning about the body I was interested in. I knew I wanted that to be some part of my career, so that's what I chose, at least a broad topic to go down. And now, you know, it's developed into so many different things, obviously personal training, my own business, and now even the podcast is a part of that topic. So it's cool. Like, I still haven't figured it out. I don't know exactly what I want to do. But if I picked a broad topic to go down and it's been working out, at least in developing into amazing things, amazing relationships. So if you pick a topic that you are passionate about and it's really inside you and something that you really feel, then start there, you know? Yeah, you know, the own. Because it's so hard for some people to really be like, oh, what do I want? You know, what do I want to do? Yeah, like, don't say I want to I wanna develop a organic, vegetarian dog food for huskies, you know? Yeah, like a super specific <laughs> Like, thing. say yeah. I want to I wanna do a very good dog food, and then from there, you know, ultimately you get to your goal. Like Elon Musk. I'm sure he's made so many different things or businesses even that he didn't plan to make originally yeah. when he was trying to do the first business idea he had, which I don't know what any of them were, but they started with a company called something X, which later got like, I doubt bought. he planned to do all the space stuff. No, no, he way. didn't. He didn't. Um, and then that company got bought out by PayPal and then he, him and his brother, I think got bought out. So he started with SpaceX and Tesla, but like you said, from there he got Solar City, which probably came from, from Tesla, Tesla, you yeah. know. From Tesla for sure. And then other companies like that. And then he has the boring company where he just has a website where he just sells like one thing a month or something. And it's like a random To get thing. money, yeah. He did a flamethrower, a hat. Um, yeah, like Well, that company is also building tunnels, so they built underground tunnels, they're doing exactly. it in LA, I think, or California. Yeah. So so many things this guy's doing, obviously. Um this is such a large scale, but I'm sure he just was interested in science, you know, yeah. he just went down that road and ended up where he is now. But I mean, even with me, you know, I started with the whole meal prep and now I also do the restaurant consultant, which 
I had to build all these different systems for my meal prep. And then I realized, hey, I can implement these systems in other restaurants and apply my 10 year experience working in restaurants and school districts and all these mm. all these different places, you know. I, I never knew I, I never knew I was gonna do consulting or meal prep, you know. I knew I, I liked the food business, but yeah. I didn't know where I was gonna end up. And even before the meal prep, you were into you had a culinary major, right? Yeah. yeah. So so you knew like I had a nutrition major. I knew I wanted that in my life. I just didn't know how yet. And sometimes you don't even know what your what your passion is, you know, what your specific passion is because you know, I I never knew I was going to do meal prep and now I realize how much I like it, you know, the fact that I'm able to run a business where you know, it, it's it brings in revenue, but also I'm helping people, you know? I mean, I don't look at the business as, as as revenue, really, because I look at the amount of meals that I make, how many customers I'm gaining, um, you know, how many new customers, how many people are messaging me, and like what I just told you about, you know, the new plans that I have yeah. for the meal prep. I, I'm, I never meant, did I ever mention money? No, I just mentioned yeah. I'm going to deliver a better product to my saying, customer. He was saying he was excited that he changed something about his menu that not only benefited him, but it benefited the customers like a ton. Yeah. Kept yeah. things more simple on both ends. So it's cool having, you know, being a business owner and being able to make changes like that and f figure those things out. And then, like you said, you help other people do that too. Yeah. And when you're trying to find, you know, you're, when you're asking yourself these questions, you also have to be true to yourself and see what you're good at, right? You might really enjoy one thing, but there's a degree of weighing in how good you are at those skills. How efficient. Too. So that's kind of where you could start is judge your skill set. What are you good at? If you don't know what you're good at, do a bunch of shit and find out, um, get out of your comfort zone essentially. But we all know, we all have a sense of what what skills that we could apply to the world to make our own lives better and usually at the end of the day that means making someone else's life better too which you know one of my favorite quotes i've been living by this past year and now moving into 2023 it's still one of the main ones that i look at every day is the more people you serve the more successful you'll be and i've just been really te i've been testing it because i was like is that true at first and i've been observing every job and every person I meet and what they do and everyone provides some type of service for someone else. Like that's all the world is, is yeah. we're all helping each other in some type of way. So it's, once you realize that, like you got to focus on that, like you focus on your customers. I focus on my clients. We're not focusing on the dollar amount. Obviously to a degree you have to acquire one, you know, you have to live life. You have to have security financially, but when you're doing something you love, you can focus on the things that actually matter, and then hopefully it'll grow too. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember where I heard it, but it was something along the lines that when, like, profit should be a residual of your business, you know, and this, like, like a second, like a side effect or whatever you want to call it. You should always focus. Of course, you want to monitor your financials because you want to stay in business. But I think that once you know what your numbers are and you're focusing on the product that you're providing, the service that you're providing, and really, really taking care of your customer, I think if you live by that, you're always going to grow, you know, unless something crazy happens. But Totally. So work-life balance. Yes. So figuring it, narrowing down from your passions, your values, and who you want to be and what skills you're good at. Once you figure that kind of thing out, how do we now balance that into a healthy lifestyle, right? With movement, with proper food, proper scheduling so that you're sleeping enough, um, proper socialization at times a day. Yeah. Another thing I saw recently that has just been tremendous on my planning for the next year is you, you're you supposed to, well, not supposed to, but a good way to live is to use your mind in the morning, like check things off your checklist, lay bricks, like work on something valuable and then fill your mind in the afternoon. So read books, socialize with people, um, make connections, watch, 
listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks, you know, do tasks that help you learn something physically, whatever, and then empty your mind in the evening. So journal, um, you know, just relax, decompress, listen to music, bathe, you know, shower, clean yourself, um, meditate, all these things. And by the way, I feel like showering is a form of meditation in my opinion. It's like, you know what showering, it really, it really is. You know what showering does for me? It resets me. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I leave the kitchen and it was a busy day, I take a shower and you know, I feel better. I'm not as maybe as, as tired as I was. And it, it is relaxing, you know. And I think it's because it's a routine, you know. At least for me, I literally shower and do the things I do after shower in the same exact way always. Yeah. So I think that's why it kind of like bring, brings you down. You know, I shower, put the order in on lotion. Like it's always yeah. the same S series too yeah yeah because we are creatures of habit yeah I, obviously i don't have to brush my hair or anything but i do the other things but i think that's a big factor and uh, i was also going to say that you have to find the right balance between work and life and 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 it's always going to change i think for example there's times where you do have to work more than having that balance. And then there's times where you can maybe lay lay low a little on work and enjoy more of the personal time. And I like the way what you just said about, you know, output in the morning, input in the afternoon, and then just release and everything at night. And it does make sense, you know, in the morning, as soon as you're up, you know, that's when you have the highest peak of energy. In the afternoon, you're like a little more calm so it's it's probably better to to read or whatever. Then at night you really have to get in the mood of and socialize in the afternoon. Too. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a huge yeah. part of it because a lot of us think filling our mind is just like you know learning, like just reading or something. But just talking to people, having genuine conversations, is huge. So yeah, and 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 I noticed that over the weekend when I was in in I was in Bozeman, Montana, at the airport. So my other flight was leaving the next day so i was planning on staying in the airport because i thought my flight was at 5 a.m but it was at 12 p.m so i ended up you know getting a room or something but i stood there for about two hours and the the part of the airport i was in i was the only person there i mean there wasn't a soul there and after an hour i started feeling uncomfortable i'm like because mm. I was in such a big place, especially a place like an airport that should be crowded, and it wasn't. So we need to socialize. You know, it's we. It's a big part of our mental health. Yeah, I saw. Not to go down this rabbit hole too deep, but I saw that they were looking at like people's lives that were like serial killers, essentially, or or you know people that were in mental health institutes, and a lot of their life they were in solitude they yeah. were they didn't have proper genuine human connection and that's literally like very what's the word consistent along all those people um so yeah it's i mean crazy so, to think about socializing is important and i think in reference to what you just said i think the more you socialize the more you can understand interactions between humans so Let's say if I say a joke that's too over, you know, that's too harsh or something, and I see your reaction, at that moment I learn what I can say and what I cannot say, you know. If I don't have that social communication with people, you know, you're not training yourself on how to be the most efficient at socializing, really, you know, because... It's definitely a skill. It is a skill. To talk yeah. and use words, especially in today's world. Yeah, which you have to be... Very Being careful. able to have attention. And also a new finding on Andrew Huberman is that eye contact is huge for for our upbringing, you know? Um, that's why we love dogs. And the way we process faces, yeah. And that's why we love dogs because they're always looking they look you at in you. the eyes. They're showing you affection. They're giving you attention. Um, they, they always want to play. Yeah. It's full of love. It's, you know, it's... 
that whole thing of having a soul, whether you know we do or we don't, there is this this part that that's in between by bio, bio, biology and spiritual. You know what I mean? You follow me? Mm-hmm. Which I don't know if we understand or not, but there, there's something that you just you need that. You know, you need people you need good energies you need love it's important to un- to understand that we don't know everything and we never are going to like there's an unknown element of life and our existence that we will never truly know and i feel like some people that makes them uncomfortable and they have to try to know these deeper thoughts um of why we're here or you know, I don't want to get religious. I don't, don't bash anyone's religion. I support all. I think believing in anything, whatever you call it, is amazing if it improves your quality of life. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to understand that we don't know everything and we never are really going to. So we have to make the most of what we have. And, and even when we think we know it, a few years down the road, we realize we don't. I mean, you see that in science, technology. Sometimes we know like we we thought physics was everything and then a few decades ago we discovered quantum physics like we thought the smallest thing was an atom and now we know there's like subparticles like underneath that and now we know there's little waves in those subparticles so we're already two levels down from mm-hmm. what we thought was everything you know yeah and that's one of my favorite things is like for example the human body we are still learning. Yeah. We are all still learning as human beings, as a society, as a world. And I mean, growing up as a kid, I thought everything was real. Like everything I learned was real. And now I know that the whole world's still learning. It's idiots all the way up. Yeah. And we don't know the answers to everything yet. And that's why I'm excited for the podcast because for example, the human body and, and health, like there's so much misleading information for my parents' generation, for example, or just the older generations, and still to this day. But we're finally, I feel, we're getting into a realm of, of generations now to where health's looked at positively and people care to learn about it and, and implement it as well. So, and that's why I love to be in this field is because it's still new. There's still discoveries to be found. There's still philosophies. There's so many different philosophies and they all work essentially. It's just... What, what works best for you? What works best in your, you know, work-life balance? And what do you enjoy the most? What benefits your body the best, your mind the best? So there's different routes, but we're still learning about the body, which is amazing to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the next 20 years will be way more influential than the last 100 in terms of mental health, physical health, technology, biology, medication. Also, now they're really... Um, don't quote me, but I, I've read something along the line that Harvard, Harvard University is starting to do clinical trials with psilocybin or something like that. Oh yeah. I don't know if with humans or, or animals, but you know, they, now no, they've been doing human, uh, I don't know if they're called trials, but yeah. So uh, therapy work. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're, I think we're in a stage where for 20 years, you know, we said, oh, you can't do these things, you can't do that, and now we're really exploring because I'm a true believer that whatever is on this planet can be used, you know? Of course, there's things that are poisonous, but even animals that are poisonous, if you know how to cook it or if you know how to remove a certain part of them, you can still eat them, you know? So yeah. it's just about learning how to use the the ingredients, the substances we have on this planet. And the medical system was designed to give treatments, not cures. Yes. So they deal with symptoms. Yeah. They 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 need a recurring payment. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. They need you to come back. So they're gonna treat you, but you're still gonna get sick next month, whatever it is. But cures are what's gonna make the world evolve and thrive and be happier and less chaotic in my opinion. So yeah, you're right. I think psilocybin for some, I mean, whatever, they're using it for PTSD, uh, anxiety, depression. ADHD, a lot of things. Schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's shown to have been making amazing, amazing 
a benefit for for all that from what I've heard from Andrew Huberman and many others so yeah I don't know but it's something to think about we'll have, definitely have a podcast on just psilocybin or mushrooms yeah yeah you have to just find you got to find the root cause of things if you can you know we'll do our research before that episode too yeah we have to we're gonna start getting more specific with things and uh you know getting more research done so we can really cite some things for you guys too so i'm looking forward to that um and i think next episode unless we have a guest is going to be about next episode just us is going to be about nutrition so yes. we're really going to dive into everything we know about nutrition and how the body works. Yeah, I mean, I was just telling you, I had a ton of sugar yesterday. I mean, I ate some candy from Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the movies and ate a whole bag of caramel popcorn. I was on a roll yesterday, man. I don't know what was going on. What movie did you see? Um, Puss and Boots. <laughs> Oh man, it that's probably good. Very good, yeah, very good. I did fall asleep for twenty minutes, but the rest of it was good. And I woke up this morning, man. Oh my god, I was like hungover, no energy. My stomach was all messed up, and I know it. I know I can't eat all that sugar. I it, it screws me did up. Did you have you know? any like brain fog? Oh yeah, all morning. So like I was working a little on that sheet I showed you. I put maybe. Okay, so I put five hours into that sheet today, right? To modify 5% of the sheet. When I was in Bozeman, Montana, I created that entire sheet. Because I had one previously, but this is the one that's going to apply to the new structure of the menu. Right, okay. So I created that sheet in, I would say, two hours, right? The whole sheet. And I modified like 5% in six hours. Yeah, because you were... You I was, man, no, I, I watched a movie in between. Yeah. I took a shower just to take a shower. You know, I wasn't focused. Yeah. That's some, that's one of the things I've been currently obsessed with is being optimal, like Optimization, how to yeah. be because, and like not being complacent. And this is the conversation we were having before with the guests we were supposed to have on today who left, but it was about complacency and why, why don't we use our time to the fullest? And now this is at, now I'm going to use myself for example. I could put in way more work for my business. I could. I know I could. Um, that's not to say I'm not working hard, but there is definitely a sense of complacency there. There is a sense of just wasting time. And I, and I think, or what I'd say, or what I try to answer the question of is, it's because I'm not in an optimal state. And I feel like if I change something in either my eating, just my sleep schedule, perhaps more consistency, I should say, um, maybe the workout routine, just overall consistency, overall structure. Like I feel like once I figure that out, then I'll be more optimal and then I'll be able to put more energy in. But yeah. then at the end of the day is that is true to an extent, but at the end of the day is just sit down and do it. But if I'm sitting down and doing something that should take me an hour and it's taking me three because I'm not in the right mindset or whatever it is, or I'm tired, I'm not focused, I'm brain fogged, then it's not doing me any good. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode. But uh, It's been 30 minutes already? It yeah. has. Yo, leave us some comments for how long you think the optimal. This one stopped. But that's fine. We can just do this one. Right? Yeah. Leave us a comment for how long you think the optimal podcast episode should be. Yeah. So far, we're doing 30 minutes. Roughly. Roughly. This was 30 minutes, and I feel like we still had a little more information. So maybe 45 minutes would be a good number. Yeah. But it's up to you guys because we want you guys to be able to watch the whole thing so you can understand the whole idea. And on the videos on Instagram, please comment on there if uh, we maybe say it, said an information and it was wrong or something like yeah. that. You know, we like we said, we, we want to start getting ready and doing a lot more research before the podcast and to, to make sure we're being accurate with everything that we're saying. Yeah, that and the reason being is because we want to get more specific on certain topics. So I know a lot of people I've talked to want us to get dive in really specifically. Yeah. But just for the first couple, we obviously we're keeping a little bit more broad, giving you a look on ourselves and just how yeah. we think about things. So, so uh, yeah, send us a message, comment, help us grow the podcast. You know, we're not doing this for any uh, financial purposes. We just want to, 
Yeah, we, we, we don't wa- get paid anything. No, no. As and you can imagine. We want to just connect with the community. We want to learn ourselves from each other and the research that we do for the podcast. And just like what we do for our businesses, we just want to be part of the community and help whoever we can and just be there for everyone. Well said. New Life Podcast. Peace.